Bill McKnight with Molly Cleveland. I'm here today to talk to you and show you how to take the three critical measurements on a piston ring. So let's get started. First measurement we want to talk about is bore diameter. Now, sometimes you already know this because you're working on, say, a 4-inch bore Ford or a Chevrolet or a 4 and an eighth inch bore 400 Chevrolet. But if, if need be, you can actually measure that. I'm using a dial caliper today, and I'm just going to go up here and measure the diameter of this bore, or in this case today, a sleeve, and then I'll know at least uh, within a couple thousandths of an inch what that diameter is. In this case here, it's 5.075 inches, so just slightly over a 5-inch bore. Okay, so let me slide this out of the road and we'll talk about the next thing we measure, and this is probably the the next two are the things that most people concern themselves with. So I'll zero out my indicator, and then what I'm going to measure now is what we call radial, or excuse me, what we call ring face width. This is thickness of the ring from top to bottom. And I measure it with my caliper here, and it says that it is about 062. Okay? Now, if you're like me, you may need to write that down, so we'll write that down, 0 0.062. Next thing I want to measure is what we call radial wall thickness, and that's the thickness of the ring from front to back, so from the face to the back of the ring, measured again with your caliper, is radial wall. And that works out to about 190, so 0.190 inches, so I'm going to write that down. Then once I have those two dimensions, it's pretty simple. I actually have the bore diameter as well now, but once I have those dimensions, I can go to a catalog, like the Molly Performance Ring Catalog, or if it's a stock ring set, I can go to my 2010-2011 Molly Original Piston Ring Catalog, and I can look up that dimension and bore width and compare it to what the catalog says. Now the other thing I like to do is, uh, if I have that opportunity, is to go right here and look it up on my computer. I can go to mollyaftermarket.com and then I can go into the e-catalog and look up the ring that way as well. Or for a third choice, some of our rings, matter of fact many of our rings, especially the performance rings that I'm dealing with here today, those dimensions are actually on the box as well. Matter of fact, this ring says it's a 1 16th uh, face width, and that 1 16th is 0.625. That's what a 16th turns out to in decimals. So when I measure this at 0.62, that's what I have. Now, it doesn't tell me radial wall here. I'd have to go back into the catalog and look up the radial wall thickness. And if I did that, I'd find out that it is about 187 to 190, just about what I measured. And you have to remember that uh, my calipers here are old, and they're like most of your calipers. They've been boxed around and banged around in a toolbox, so they may not be perfect, but they'll get you within a thousandth or so. If your dimensions are radically different than what the catalog says, then you need to suspect that you've got the wrong ring. Now let me show you one more tip, and this is probably the hardest of all to measure, is the radial wall and the face width of the oil ring. Now, most of you have three-piece oil rings in your set, so it's kind of tricky. You have to actually assemble the ring in your hand, and it's like you really need almost three hands to do this. But you assemble the ring in your hand, then you take your calipers, and you measure the three pieces assembled, just like that, and then you take your reading and write it down. This one here is uh, 120, so 0.120. And then I'll measure the radial wall on this package of rings here. And I do that by just measuring this way, putting it all together. And that's about 115, somewhere right in there, on the radial wall. Then again, I can go to my catalog, I can go to my computer, or I can go to the box that the rings came on. And uh, th this one should tell you that in this case here, it's supposed to be a three millimeter oil ring. So I would have to go to a decimal conversion table, which I happen to have on my computer, and type in uh, 0.120 and see if that comes out to about three millimeters. 
Matter of fact, let's do that real quickly here. I'm going to fire my computer up. I'm going to go to my decimal conversion chart. And I'm going to type in here in inches, 0 0.120. And sure enough, you can see here, it comes out just a hair over three millimeters. Now again, compared to uh, holding all that in one hand and measuring it with the other and my, you know, error, I'm probably right where I need to be at three millimeters. So it's that simple. Now we're going to do three more of these videos, so you want to make sure you tune in to catch the rest of the series. The next one we're going to do is actually entitled Measuring the Piston. So we're going to measure the ring lands on the piston to see what we have there because that's part of this equation of well. Then the next one after that talks about uh, ring back clearance, the clearance between the ring and the back of the piston land. And then the final one talks about ring end gap. Make sure you sign up to YouTube. And again, make sure you visit us at mollyaftermarket.com.